Hi, guys, we're, we're doing an experiment. We're gonna do a poll. My first Animal Quest stream. All right, we know what they're gonna answer. Um, we're gonna do a poll on whether or not you've seen this Animal Quest before. This is uh, the Snake Edition, the Snake version. When did I do Animal Quest Snake Is it Snake today? Isn't it in the title? Is it not? It's just a, it's in the title, dumb. <laughs> December 6th, 2021. So we're going to run a poll to see if you guys have seen this or not. Because I want some data. Please answer the poll. I, want, I need it for my brain. Danger Noodle Quest. Nope, rope. That's very millennial of you guys to say. And I will say, <laughs> not the worst thing that snakes have ever heard. I guess it's fine. I guess it's playful enough that it's fine. Eighty percent knows. That's cool. Wait, that's good. What do I put when I don't remember? Just don't answer the poll. <laughs> Just don't answer the poll. We're doing research, guys. This is market research. It's not market research. Is it? I guess it is. Kind of technically. I um, haven't seen any animal quests. Welcome. Welcome. Okay. We're at 80-20? Huh? That's insane. Did you really? I've seen all of them. Wow. Does watching the VOD count? Mm, no. So you can say no. It would be like, did you see it live? I'm new here, so I don't know what Animal Quest is. Wonderful. Guys, don't tell the 20 percenters, but you're my favorite. <laughs> you're my new favorite, not the ones that have been around for years. <laughs> no, you guys. That's what I'm here for, yeah. Um, okay, if you have not seen Animal Quest, <laughs> so what the heck? 81% have not seen this Animal Quest before. Okay, wonderful. Perfect. Excellent news. That makes this feel worth it. I can't, I'm going to be honest. It was a little hard for me to go live today. I'm really just like, there's just a lot. There's a lot going on. I leave for Brazil. I haven't packed for Brazil. I got to, I have a meeting. I had two meetings this morning. I have, I got to do stuff. I have two appointments tomorrow. And I just got back from LA. Anyway, um, if you have not been to Animal Quest before, welcome. Uh, this is a series that originally aired on my Twitch channel, on Maya, and I curate these presentations myself. I do all the research myself, so if anything's wrong, it's my fault. <laughs> and um, it's a spotlight on each ambassador that we have at Alvea. So I have done one on every species that we have here. Um, so every species, every ambassador that we've had has had an animal quest, except for like the ambassadors that are in pairs, right? So we had like a crow animal quest, not like an abbot one and a coconut one, obviously. Um, and then with the snakes, we're doing snake edition today. So it is with our two snakes, um, noodle and patchy. So I'm going to teach you guys about snakes today. That's the plan. This is the presentation I made a few years ago or a couple years ago. Um, if we're the 20%, do you want us to leave? No, stay. You'll see it now, it'll be different. I have hair this time. I assume I didn't have, I don't know. Anyway, all right. Um, so My stream deck. <laughs> it don't work. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Starting out strong, everybody stand by. Nobody freak out. Nobody freak out. I'll restart my little intro thing so you guys can, uh, you guys can, or it can all go in on the website. Because they're uh, the website ones are getting replaced by these ones. Because I would like to think that I'm better at presenting now, and also I know more now, so I've corrected some information, yada, 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 yada. but I don't know. Some of the stuff from today might surprise us. <gasps> it's been a long time since I've seen this presentation, too. I may as well be an 80 percenter. How's packing been going? What an insanely insensitive thing to ask me right now. 
Um, do you guys have any ideas for, uh, remember my, my animal sex stream when I drew here on my iPad? Do you guys have ideas for how I could incorporate that in a stream? Because I know that I can and I have not had any time to think about how, but I know that I want to because it's so cool. It's such a cool concept. Um, I just literally have not given it any thought. But if you guys have any ideas, then I won't have to think. I just have to read. You know? Do that for presentations instead of full screen Prezi. Maybe bullet point facts on the screen you always draw on the board yeah but it's better to draw on my ipad right on the stream okay yes i i understand the function of it i'm asking you what <laughs> what i can do with it <laughs> you know like series wise like education wise um that kind of thing you know That's the same question. No, it is not the same question. All right, forget it. I'll think of it. <laughs> Crazy animal and attitude. See, that's an idea. Okay, they came up with an idea. Okay. All right. Um draw animals you know what maybe one day we can do a pictionary night or something and you guys can win prizes i don't know um i added something to the lore auction by the way uh which don't ask me when that is i i don't know when it is uh but we will have one and uh i stole the plaque uh for best shared channel that would have gone on the streamer awards peepo trophy that we didn't that didn't get put on there because we didn't win <laughs> But I have the plaque that would have gone on there if we did. I put it in my carry-on. So we have that for the lore auction. We also have all this stuff. Ah, oh, the good old days. <clears throat> From the first Halloween event? Are you kidding? The dunk tank sign? Sick. The good old days, Elvis Jeopardy, huh? Nice. A classic, iconic collab moment. Snork held this sign. And then, this is a good one. The first plushy launch decorations when we were a little low budget, and so I made it. I made them myself. <laughs> I painted this stompy plush on cardboard. Lore auction items. God, where are you going to put that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway. Um, so, we'll do a lore auction eventually. Thank you, Space. Uh, okay, so... Good, now there are more people here. Welcome to Animal Quest. Animal Quest is a series where I spotlight each ambassador species that we have at Alveus. Today's Animal Quest is on our snakes. We have two snake ambassadors here. Um, before I teach you guys about snakes, we're gonna talk about the ambassadors that we have. And we have videos that show their stories. This is Noodle. It's true. Space. Can you move the camera up? Whoa, Hamsty! Thank you for the fifty dollars. Hello, Hamsty donated a lot to the uh, Alvarez Valentine's Day fundraiser. Thank you so much. This looks like a Danny video. I think Danny made this. Hello, miss. Oh, hello, miss. Are Noodles old enclosure. Are you hungry? Okay. Good girl. Good girl. 
Oh. Are you ready? Neto! She's so cute. All right, that is Noodle's story. You saw it in the video, Danny. Excellent video from Deep in the Vault. Uh, Noodle's a carpet python. We got her from a zoo in California. Um, she was in a real small enclosure at that zoo because they had a lot of reptiles. Uh, and they never used her for education programs because whenever people would walk by, she would strike at the glass. Because she got fed in her enclosure. Um, so whenever her enclosure was opened, it was to feed her. But otherwise, no one would go in there because she would strike because she thought she was getting fed every time you opened it. So it became this problem where it just never got opened unless you were feeding her, but then that reinforced the problem. Um, so, yeah, so they couldn't use her or they didn't use her for education. They asked me, it's actually kind of a funny story because I used to intern at this zoo that I'm talking about. And when I started Alveus, one of the first things that I was looking for for our education program was a snake. And they said, um, you want the carpet? And I was like, no. <laughs> Because I was an intern at that zoo and they always told me never open the door to the carpet because she'll, she'll strike at you and she'll bite you. And so I was like, is there any snakes that you're willing to part with? I'm starting my own education program. And they're like, you want the carpet? And I was like, no. Uh, but it was the only snake that, that was <laughs> available to me at that time. We've now been offered, oh God, like 50 snakes or something. But I wouldn't want any other one because Noodle is sick. She makes an excellent ambassador. I know it's been a very, very long time since you guys have seen her because we've had a mite problem with her that we've been fighting for a long time, but uh, fingers crossed not to jinx it. She has been mite free for a couple weeks now, um, which is very, very exciting. So hopefully we will be seeing Noodle very soon. She will move into her new enclosure very soon um, and you will, you will see her again soon. But um, yeah, so that's Noodle. She's a carpet python. She's about eight feet long. Um, I can't bring her out today because I will be bringing Patchy out later today and uh, mites, but I can potentially show you her length if one of these is intact. Doesn't look like it. Oh yeah, here's one. These are noodle skins. Snake shed. She's about this long. Eight foot long snake. She's a big gal. She's a big gal, but she's wonderful. Um, so we got Noodle. And then we have one other snake ambassador because like our insect program, I wanted a, a gateway snake and a big like awe-inspiring snake and so noodle is not the gateway snake because she's really big um but patchy is who is patchy danny you are the best editor i know but Max has it on you in, in doodling. <laughs> I'll give him that. <laughs> that man can doodle. Our newest Alveus ambassador is Patchy. Yay, Patchy. <laughs> Only it's time. small! We got him from a python breeder who Ella and I are both friends with. She breeds for color and she sells to pet stores. And a lot of times when you breed for color, you get some of these some of these issues. And she was unable to sell them to a pet store because, because of this handicap. So she wanted him to go to a special home. Um, and that's why he's here. How did he get We thought Patchy there? was a boy at first. <laughs> python. Wow. <laughs> So, 
When we first got Patchy the ball python, she was this big. Baby little baby Patchy. This long. It's in two, <laughs> you get it, this long. Little tiny baby Patchy, okay? Patchy's last shed was this long. Whoa, put them on table for the comparison. <laughs> Yay, Patchy, grown. Did so good, has grown so much. She's amazing. Uh, Fat Dirty Mole, thank you for the 15. Salty Cajun, thank you for the $51. Hi, welcome back to a normal stream. Um, Salty Cajun also donated a bunch during the Valentine's Day event. Thanks for coming back. Um, yes, she, she doubled in size, more than doubled in size, actually, I think. Uh, so, you saw in that video, we got... <laughs> we got Patchy from a ball python breeder in Central Texas who breeds ball pythons for pet stores. Um, she breeds ball pythons for color, and sometimes when you breed animals for color, you get genetic defects. Patchy was born with only one eye. So then she couldn't sell her to pet stores because no pet store wants to buy a one-eyed snake because people want to buy just like healthy, normal snakes as pets. Um, and so she said, I can't sell this one. You want this one? And we said, sure. Why are they called ball pythons? Because when they get scared, they curl up into a ball. Um, we did have a ball python before Patchy. Um, we got from a confiscation in California, confiscation by uh, California Fish and Wildlife from LAX, the Los Angeles airport. Somebody shipped in a bunch of baby ball pythons to LAX in PVC pipe, in cargo, like through cargo. They were trying to illegally import wild baby ball pythons for the pet trade. There were hundreds. Um, and so they had to place hundreds of snakes. Uh, they placed one of them, one of them with us, uh, and that snake did not, did not make it, um, which is really sad, but we're going to talk about how all that stuff works today, um, and other stuff about snakes today, but that's one of the reasons that we have them, is, is to teach you guys about how snakes work. So, that was patchy. Natural history, who, what, when, where, why snake? How do we get snakes in the first place? They've been around a really, really, really long time. Um, there are several species of snakes that are in fossil records from over 100 million years ago, but they've been around for much longer than that. They must The first snakes must have been millions of years before then. Um, but the first fossil records we have are about 100 million years ago. Um, new fossils suggest that ancest their ancestors lived in burrows or on land. Interesting thing about snakes, you think that noodle, eight foot long, is a big snake. Snakes used to be really, really, really big. <laughs> Prehistoric snakes. Guess how big? Big for the 10. Guess in feet. 200 feet, 6 inches, 80 feet, 30 feet, 50 feet, 12 feet. A thousand feet. Thirty to forty-six feet snakes used to be. Snakes used to be thirty to forty-six feet. Um, this, this was about ninety million years ago. Uh, we had the uh, Matsoya that was in South America, Asia, Africa, and Australia, and then we had the Titanoboa which is a classic name, everybody loves that name. Titanoboa, 30 to 46 feet, um, lived about 60 million years ago in Colombia. That snake was about 2,500 pounds. 2,500 pounds. A cerro, a horse, for reference, is like between 1,000 and 1,200 pounds. A is 1,100 pounds. Um, but this is what those snakes looked like. Holy. Wow, 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 wow. What does such a snake eat? All the other giant, <laughs> giant animals. <laughs> wow, 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 it's a big snake. So they used to be really big. Unfortunately, they are no longer that large. 
I say unfortunately because I think it would be cool. I said they were 30 to 46 feet. Everyone was like, but how many feet did they have? What defines a snake, you guys? A snake is a, it's a reptile without legs. <laughs> snake is a reptile, but they don't have feet, obviously. Noodle. Um, Riley, thank you for the 10. That's awesome. Thanks. Um, Rob in the hood, thank you for the prime. So yeah, they don't have feet. It's, it's a reptile without legs. Uh, there are over 3,000... Stolen, thank you for the five. There are over 3,000 species of snakes, um, which is quite a few. They are exothermic, which means they need outside temperature... They can't regulate their internal body temperature on their own. They rely on external temperature sources, external heat sources to regulate their body temperatures. Um, so they're exothermic, thermoregulation. That's why snakes like basking. That's why they have heat lamps in, uh, under human care. Um, so I missed a couple donors earlier, just before I keep going. I'm sorry if I missed a donation or I missed a sub. These get... Uh, archived and put on the website as like a standalone like educational segment so i try not to read off chat too much or call out like subs or bits or donors or whatever just because it breaks that up so if i don't react to your thing i may just like wave to you but if i don't say anything that's why um some snakes are venomous uh some snakes are venomous snakes can be anywhere from guess how small Guess what the smallest snake is? The smallest snake size. Six inches, seven feet, four centimeters, one inch, one foot, one inch, 10 centimeters, about four inches. Snakes can be about four inches to about 30 feet long. There are still snakes that are 30 feet long. Wahoo. Um, Another cool thing about snakes is that they smell with their tongue. Snakes have a lot of really, really, really cool adaptations uh, in how they experience the world. A couple of those adaptations are, the, you know what? Let me get a snake and I'll show you. You guys want to meet Patchy? I was going to draw it, but then I was like, wait, I have a literal snake. <laughs> I can just show you on the snake. Patchy! Patchy! Hello? God, I can't wait until the snakes get in their enclosures. These temporary enclosures are a pain. Hello? me man patchy has gotten so massive it's actually crazy okay dun dun patchy Patchy the ball python. Okay, let me show you some of the really cool adaptations that snakes have, some of the really cool things about snakes. One, how do snakes smell? Chat. You're teaching today? Snakes smell with their tongue. That's right. Um, smell. Smell. They flick their tongue around. That's right. Check out Patchy's tongue. Patchy, please stick out your tongue. Thank you. Thank you. There. Okay. Um, so Patchy sticks her tongue out. She collects scent particles on her tongue. She brings her tongue back into her mouth. There's a root. There's an organ on the roof of her mouth called a Jacobson's organ. She presses her tongue up against that organ, and it sends signals to her brain for what she's smelling interesting thing about the way that they smell this is a very recent thing that i learned i just read um in a really great book uh called an immense world 
Their tongue, you guys know that snakes' tongues are shaped like this? Tongue, like a fork? One of the theories for why they have a fork-shaped tongue, it used to be that the Jacobson's organ, there were two holes on the roof of their mouth, so they would bring their tongue back into the mouth and then stick the forks up into those two holes. That's actually not true. They just press their tongue against that organ. Now, they think need a darker marker. Come on, man, you can see that. Um, now, they think, Patchy, grabbing my headphones. Um, now, they think that their tongue is so specialized and so sensitive that if they're following the trail for like a rodent or something, if this is a snake, wow, a little snake, his little eyeballs, yay. The snake's on the move. There's a rodent. He's running this way. Ah, the snake is coming to get me. The rodent leaves a trail like this, right? A scent trail. And so if they pick up the scent on the right side of the fork of their tongue, even though they cannot see this far, they will veer to the right. <laughs> and if the rodent's over here and it leaves a scent that picks up on the left side, they will veer to the left. Very, very interesting, huh? Okay, it would have been better if I had a darker marker, but you can see what I'm saying. <laughs> you get what I'm saying. So that is very interesting. Snakes also have the ability uh, to detect the pheromones of rodents. Um, they have done studies where they found that snakes will choose to chase a rat. That was not her, it was my, my finger cracked. Um, they will choose to chase, chase a rat, a female rat that's recently had babies, as opposed to a male rat, um, because there's more potential prey to follow there. Um, so, really, really, really sensitive, uh, really incredible ability to smell. Somebody said, do they have noses too? They do have little nostrils. Okay, um, very helpful, Patchy. They do have little nostrils, but those are just for breathing. And then the other thing you'll notice is all the holes on the sides of Patchy's mouth there. Pit organs, heat sensing organs. So snakes smell with their tongue. They also can see their prey's heat signature. So imagine like, this is not really accurate, but imagine like a thermal camera where you like see a person running, yeah, like the predator, and you see a, a person running and it's like bright red. It's not like that, but for the sake of us understanding what it's like, it, sure. They can like see their prey's heat signature. So they also can explore the world with that sense. Sense that we just don't have either, which is very cool. Are they independent from birth? Yes, they are. They're precocial animals. Snakes hatch and then they're ready to rumble. Ready to rumble. Um, if you guys have questions, you can do, is it command ask or hashtag ask? Hashtag, hashtag ask followed by your question. I will do a Q&A at the end of, uh, of the session. But there's Patchy for you. What do you guys think? Patchy. Yay, Patch. Patchy. All right. Okay, stand by. Putting the snake back. I'm coming back out. Here you go, little lady. Ma'am. Okay. Great. So, thank you. So, oh, you want to see the smallest snake and the, the longest snake? Look at me. Put those in there. There's a little tiny little baby snake. A little, little snake and then a big snake.
pretty cool, huh? Pretty cool. So that's what a snake is. That's some cool things about snakes. Um, conservation for snakes. Uh, one of those fields that's unfortunately pretty underappreciated, undersupported, uh, because people really like charismatic mammals. Like if you go in and you're doing like conservation of polar bears, for example, great. Everybody loves like a fluffy mammal. But if you go in and you're trying to do research for snakes, it can be really hard to get support for that. Same with insects. A lot of people just like don't really want, you know. Um, so they are threatened by lots of things. Habitat loss, obviously everything is threatened by habitat loss. Unsustainable trade. One of the things that I talk about every time we have the snakes out is the pet trade, right? Um, and how snakes have been affected. Both wild caught snakes and captive bred snakes have been negatively affected by the pet trade. Uh, the introduction of invasive species. You guys have probably heard about the the Burmese python, reticulated python crisis in uh, in Florida, that people get big pythons as pets, and then they get big, like they do. And then people are like, oh, it's too big. And then they just let it go. <laughs> yeah, in the Everglades. Um, so they let these pets go, and then they become invasive. That's an issue. Human conflict, people do not like snakes. People do not like snakes, man. People hate finding snakes in the wild. Um, in Texas, there's a lot of indiscriminate killing of snakes regardless of what species it is because people are like, oh, snake. Kill it. Um, urban development, same thing as habitat loss and then climate change as well. Um, I put this graph in here. Conservation of the world's snakes. This is IUCN 2012. Um, Extinct species, threatened species, near threatened, low risk, and then data deficient. I was looking really closely at that because I didn't remember why I put this graph in. <laughs> but the reason I must have put this graph in is because of that data deficient number. 24% of snake species in 2012, they couldn't even evaluate because they don't have the data for it. Um, there are 3,000 species of snakes, uh, but... 24% of them, they don't know. Data deficient, really sad. Um, so yeah, snakes and humans. This is a crazy gif I put in there. Look at this. <laughs> what the hell? Anyway, um, Let's talk about snakes and humans. There's been a lot of, of conflict with snakes and humans. I will, admittedly, uh, the World Health Organization says that snake bites is considered a neglected public health crisis or public health issue in many tropical and subtropical countries in the US. It's not an issue, it's a non-issue even. In the US, uh, getting bit by a venomous snake, um, actually, I'm not gonna say the stat I was just going to because it's in a poll and I would spoil it. Um, but there are between 81,000 and 138,000 uh, deaths per year due to envenomings. So via venomous snake bite, uh, that's because of a lack of quality and affordable health care, a lack of antivenom um, in those places. But it has led to the indiscriminate killing of snakes, which you can't really blame people for that because they don't have the health care and the antivenom to protect themselves. But... Uh, it's when people see snakes then, no matter what it is, they just kill it. Uh, I, I saw that happen several times when I was in Belize. I couldn't ID those snakes because I had never been to Belize and I didn't know what kind of snakes they were. But I saw, thank you so much. I saw a few occasions where there was a snake and someone said snake and then three people ran over and just cut its head off. It's just a thing that happens um, because snakes are a risk to people in those places. Um, so they're demonized as a whole. One of the craziest, craziest, craziest examples of uh, demonizing snakes um, in a way that just makes no sense. Before I tell you guys about this, I want to make it clear. This is how many uh, deaths in the US there are per year due to snake bites. The CDC estimates per year, this is how many deaths there are in the entire United States by venomous snake.
okay? <laughs> Not to say that that doesn't matter, but I just want you to see this before I show you the scale of what the Sweetwater Rattlesnake Roundup is. The Sweetwater, you know what, just watch this video. Warning, if you don't like seeing stuff like this, you might wanna just, yeah. My name is Riley Sawyers, and I'm a past president of this year's PR chairman for the world's largest Sweetwater JC's Rattlesnake Roundup. It all started back in 1958 when uh, area farmers and ranchers uh, came to the JC's and said, hey man, y'all know we got tons of rattlesnakes. Uh, let's catch them and do something with. Well, really about uh, 1959, 1960, it started growing. Uh, more media started getting involved and more people started hearing about it. And it just has grown tremendously. There's about 30 to 40,000 people a year come to Sweetwater, where we live and do business at. Uh, we prefer not to every step he takes a rattlesnake. So uh, that's one reason we have the Roundup is just on population control. We catch a approximate average of about 5,000 pounds a year. Hunters will start bringing their snakes in. Uh, we buy them for a nominal fee. They're thrown into a pit, and from that pit, they go to the milking pit. We actually take the venom out of their glands, and from that station, they go to research where they're measured, sexed, and weighed, and that information is sent to the Texas Parks and Wildlife uh, for them to do their studies and make limits or suggestions or whatever, just like any other wildlife. And then from that station, um, they go to probably one of the favorite ones of everybody's where the blood and guts are, we call it the skinning pit. Their head is uh, chopped off, uh, skinned, and then all part of the rattlesnakes are used. We end up cooking the meat, making belts, wallets, boots, whatever, out of the hides. It's a wonderful event. It's just not about snakes. We, we have a gun, knife, coin show, a carnival, flea market, a cook-off that hosts about 125 to 150 teams, and uh, just a lot of entertainment uh, for the individual or family for a night or the weekend. So, my understanding is that this is an event that's sanctioned by Texas Parks and Wildlife um, because they do take some information back to them for research. The, the thing that I want to point out about this event, though, is that it's really hard to imagine with any other type of animal. Like, you put any mammal in an event like this, even gophers, you know, like rats, rabbits, goats, birds, you know, anything like that. If you put them in an event like this and it's a, a spectacle, you know, where people come and and watch and are part of this and, and they love it because everybody hates snakes. It's just a really, really remarkable example of um, how much hate there is for snakes out there. Um, and this is a thing that's still happening. Bring the kids, speaking of which, uh, yeah. They have a wall out here where when they, <laughs> when they like kill the snakes, they drain their blood into like a bucket and then they have kids do handprints on the wall like they're the kids 
It's like a kid activity. And I just want to emphasize, I just, I, it's really hard to imagine any other species of animal being a, being a spectacle for an event like this. Um, so yeah, the Sweetwater Rattles Rattlesnake Roundup has uh, culled over 250,000 rattlesnakes since 1958. Um, so it's pretty crazy. It's pretty, uh, pretty crazy. Yeah, they do about 5,000 pounds a year of, uh, of snakes. So let's see. Yeah, very sad. Sorry. I know that vi that video probably is maybe besides like the parrot videos where it shows some of the transport. It's like one of the worst, one of the hardest uh, animal quest videos I think I have. Um, why should we care <laughs> about snakes? Uh, snakes are important. Uh, yeah, the donkey one's really rough too. Snakes are really important. They help maintain and balance our food webs in the wild. Snakes uh, eat rodents, so they're natural pest control for us, which is very, very cool. Uh, Chemical-free pest control as well, which is very cool and very important. Um, and also, not just, I know you guys know that, that Noodle eats like once a month and Patchy eats like every other week. Yes, like it's not like they're eating uh, hundreds of rodents a week, but uh, their presence makes rodents stay away too because they can smell them so having snakes around your house is a good thing is a good thing um venomous snakes kind of the same with the roach conversation that i have it's it's hard to go cohabit with things that are really dangerous um but like gopher snakes rat snakes cool to have around you um because that uh, that means less rats for you uh they reduce human disease spread by eating rodents because rodents spread a lot of disease, uh, salmonella, Lyme disease, West Nile, lots of other diseases that are a risk to us. Uh, and then snake venom is being used in the treatment of thrombosis, arthritis, cancer, lots of other diseases. Um, so, yeah. Snakes are important. However, there are lots of misconceptions about snakes. One misconception, snakes are poisonous. <laughs> let's, let's just go over some, some of the snake myths that everybody hears. I think part of the reason that people hate snakes so much and hate a lot of things so much is just because they don't understand them at all. They don't know anything about them, so they don't care about them. So let's talk about some of the myths. One, snakes are poisonous. Uh, no, actually they're venomous. The difference, some species of snakes are venomous, not all of them. Um, if they're poisonous, if I always have such a hard time saying this phrase. If you bite it and it's poisonous, you're screwed. If it bites you and it's venomous, you're screwed. Poison is if you eat it, bad. Venom is if it bites you, bad. Okay. Another myth. Snakes are aggressive towards humans. Like most animals, some snakes display defensive behaviors to keep themselves safe. You're never going to walk on a trail and find a snake chasing you or hunting you down to eat you. The only time you're going to get bit by a snake is if you unfortunately, like if you step on it or you don't know that it's there, you accidentally step on it or you get really close to it and you scare it and then it goes to bite you. Snakes are slimy. This is another myth. Some people think that they're slimy. They're not. They're actually really smooth. <laughs> Snake scales are made of keratin, which is the same thing our fingernails are made of. They're like real, almost like silky feeling. Um, myth, big snakes want to eat people. There are very, 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 very few snakes on this planet that are capable of eating a human. Snakes can only eat things that are about as big as the largest part of their body. Granted, there are snakes that are like, really big so it's not impossible but it just doesn't happen it's it's so so unlikely that that happens they would much rather go for smaller prey another myth snakes are not cute the truth betty i have some polls for you Poll number one, I said some snake species are venomous. What percentage of snake species worldwide do you think are venomous? Type A, B, C, or D. What do you think? What do you think? Yeah? 
Most people think 20%. Some people think 40%. Some people think 60%. Not a lot of people think 90%. Have you guys heard me say this stat before? So many first time chatters. Hi, first time chatters. Hi, welcome to Animal Quest. Huh? Really? Where'd you come from? <laughs> All right. It looks like most. It looks like most people are saying twenty uh, percent. Correct. You are correct. Um, yes. Every time I watch your collabs. Thanks for watching the collabs. Uh, yeah. Um, so about only twenty percent of them are venomous. Wouldn't we care about the total number of venomous or I don't understand your question. I think that's what this is. Uh huh. Um, unless I read that wrong. Only about 20% of snake species worldwide are venomous. Good guesses, everybody. 20% are venomous, but out of all the snake species worldwide, what percentage of them could kill or significantly harm a human? There are 20% that are venomous, but what percentage could kill or significantly harm a human? I realized when I wrote these answers that you only have two <laughs> options. So I didn't really, I wasn't really using my brain for that one. But hey, you're 50-50 here, guys. What do you think? Is it C or D? C or D. Most people are thinking D. Most people, some people are thinking C. Um, again, there are about 3,000 species of snakes. You're helping us develop good test-taking skills. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, most people think that it's uh, D, 7%. You are correct. Only about 7% of snake, snake species worldwide could kill or significantly harm a human. How many of you guys are in the United States of America? How many of you are in the U.S.? Me, 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 me. Me, me, not me. Not me, nope, not me, not me, me, me. All right, well, if you're in the U.S., then. Uh, hello. Um, will snake kill you in the U.S.? I read this question right before I went live. I have never written a question so poorly in my life. But I'm just going to read it as I wrote it years ago. Which of these causes of death are you nine times more likely to die from as opposed to a snake bite? I mean, you get what I'm trying to say, right? Which of, the, which of these causes of death are you nine times more likely to die from than a snake bite? A, a car accident. You're nine times more likely to die from a car accident than a space than a snake bite. B, you're nine times more likely to die from a dog attack than you are a snake bite. C, you're nine times more likely to die from a lightning strike than a snake bite. Or D, you're nine times more likely to die from lung cancer than a snake bite. People guessing. A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. Most people are saying C. This is in the U.S. Five to six deaths a year via snake bite in the United States of America. And the correct answer is C. Most of you were right. Uh, you are nine times more likely to die from a lightning strike in the United States of America than you are getting bit by a venomous snake. <laughs> Moral of the story. You don't have to be as scared of snakes as you think. I hate the order that I did this presentation in. Why am I? All right, whatever. Um, <laughs> I guess we're going to talk about. Now we're going to talk about the pet trade for some reason. Um, I don't know why I didn't do this in the beginning, but. Uh, Ball pythons, you guys met Patchy earlier. This is a crazy stat, actually, because there are a lot of animals that are exploited in the pet trade. Y I feel like you would think monkeys or like parrots or something. Uh, ball pythons are exported from Africa more than any other species monitored by CITES. CITES is the Convention on the International Trade of Endangered Species. 
Ball pythons exported from Africa more than any other species monitored by sites. African gray parrots are in Africa. What the heck? Isn't that crazy? Um, one of the reasons that I've said in collabs, someone asked me at the beginning of the stream, why are they called ball pythons? It's because when they get scared, they curl up into a ball. Terrible, terrible defense mechanism. Because if you're walking around, you're a poacher, you're walking around, you see a little ball python, you go, boo, they don't say that, they just walk up to it, and then they curl up, and then they're like, all right. And they plop them into a bag. Um, the numbers, how big, so I said, exported more than any other species monitored by site by sites. How many is that? Since 1957, over 3.6 million ball pythons have been exported from Africa. Over 3.6 million ball pythons. That's insane. Um, thousands of ball pythons die every year in intercontinental, intercontinental, intercontinental transit. Uh, a lot of those ball pythons that came at, through LAX died in transit. Uh, more than 18.3 million, <laughs> 18.3 million live reptiles were imported into the U.S. between 1989 and 1997, about a 10-year period. 18.3 million live reptiles. 10 years. 18.3 million live reptiles imported into just the U.S. 18.3 million live reptiles into the US in 10 years for the pet trade. The reptile pet trade is massive. Um, and as of 2019, there are over 1,400 species of reptiles uh, that can be found in the online pet trade. You can buy anything, dude. You can look up like this type of gecko, this type of snake, this type of snake, this, 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 whatever. You can just buy them everywhere. It's really crazy. Um, the journey then, what does that look like? They're getting this many reptiles imported in the US. What does it look like both legally and illegally? The left picture here shows what it looks like legally. This um, was an inspection of a ball python shipp shipment from West Africa to Miami. Again, this was a legal import. Um, so there's a legal limit of no more than eight ball pythons per 18 inch by 24 inch bag. Eight snakes. Connor, you got a tape measure? He, did you take my ruler? Do you have a tape measure? Oh, thanks. This will work, it's fine. Eight ball pythons per 18 inch by 24 inch bag. That's 24 inches. It's like, it's like this big. It's like this big. Eight snakes in there. Um, that's legal transport. That's from West Africa to Miami. Um, an illegal transport looks like the one on the right. Uh, this was the seizure of 80 live snakes by Cameroonian Customs. This was in 2020, you guys. 2020. Four years ago. These were seized in Cameroon. transporting live snakes in water bottles in a cooler. Insane. People do crazy things to import wildlife, man. They're, I've heard of baby parrots get putting in, getting put in hubcaps in car tires, which is a terrible way to transport because the car tires freaking turn as you're going across the border. So they're just in a, like, it's worse than being in a dishwasher <laughs> or like a spin cycle. Um, I've heard of birds being put in hubcaps of cars. I've heard of armadillos being shipped in bowling bags. I've heard of ball pythons being put in water bottles inside of coolers. Ball pythons being sh shoved into PVC pipe, being shipped through cargo. Um, so yeah, that was, a, that was in 2020. It's crazy that this stuff happens. What is the effect though on snakes overall? Terrible news. We don't really know. <laughs> we know dangerously little. 
um, about what it does to wild populations. Ball pythons appear to be locally threatened uh, in ben 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 benin, benign, benin, frick. Should have looked that one up. Um, due to intense collection driven by the pet trade, uh, but there's really not enough data to know how much the pet trade is affecting wild snake populations. There's not enough people that care about it um, is one of the problems. So we don't know. But what we do know, if we're not thinking from a population number perspective, obviously the welfare, not chill. Regardless of how it affects wild populations, transport like either of those, legal or illegal, um, is really unfortunate. And it would just be better, this is my personal opinion, it would just be better if it just didn't happen. <laughs> okay, that's what I think. Um, recommendations. What you guys can do to help snakes. Uh, one, be nice to them. Maj. Be nice to snakes. If you come across a snake, cool. Sick. Oh my God, it's a snake. Here, let me give you a demo of what that should look like. Here's, here's a snake. I'm a hiker. <coughs> la, 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 la. Oh my God, it's a snake. Oh, he's so cute. <laughs> Notice, I said really nice things to him, and I said he was really cute, but I didn't pick him up. I'm not telling y'all to go pick up snakes if you don't know what it is. Okay, <laughs> keep your distance, but say like, wow, that's so cool. Maybe take a picture, and then move along. Move right along. Don't freaking, don't, don't poke it. <laughs> Just <laughs> leave it be, um, especially if you don't know what it is. Don't go pick him up, picking him up. Um, plus one. You can take a photo. Just don't get in its face to take a photo. But it would be really cool if you saw a snake. If you see a snake, or if you see any other cool wildlife, but a snake would be really cool, because we're talking about this now, you could post it on Show and Tell. And then we could talk about the snake that you saw, we could figure out what kind of snake it is, smile. Show and Tell coming up when I get back from Brazil, guys. It's happening, you gotta get your hours in. You gotta get your hours in soon. Okay, um, teach your friends that snakes are good. If you're walking around with your friend and your friend sees a snake, and they're like <coughs> You can say, no, I need to be Okay, um, purchase pet reptiles responsibly. I would prefer everyone just get a cat or a dog. But if you really want a reptile, just make sure that the reptile you're getting is captive bred. Uh, make sure it's not, <laughs> it's not, was not something that was poached out of the freaking wild. Um, and make sure if it's captive bred that it's responsibly bred, okay? Don't get like a really fancy looking snake that's gonna have neurological issues for its whole life. You gotta do a lot of research. You gotta do a lot of research on the terrarium that they go in, on their humidity, on their temperature, on what they eat, on their substrate, on the extra supplements that you have to give them, on finding an exotic vet that's very freaking expensive because exotic vets are expensive. Um, make sure you can have it for the duration of its entire lifespan. A lot going on, a lot going on. Um, if you find a snake, don't freaking kill it. I s if any of you watch this whole, pre if you stayed here the whole time and you find a snake outside and you kill it, I swear, that would be so messed up. You can call, if you really need it relocated, uh, you can call your state's, par state's Park and Wildlife Division or your local animal control to see if they will help you relocate. They may not. Um, if you're in NA, there is a free snake relocation directory that you can look up online. If you really need a snake relocated, someone will do that for you. Do not relocate a snake yourself. It's not ideal to relocate them in the first place because then they get real discombobulated and um, it can affect their ability to survive. It also could be really dangerous for you if you don't know what kind of snake it is. One time I accidentally killed a snake when I mowed the lawn and cried. Oh, I'm sorry, that's sad. <laughs> Never mowed the lawn again. That's really sad. You know, it happens. We cohabit with wildlife. We just, it's, it's nice that you care. Some people would be stoked that they did that. So that's all I have for you. Um, I can take your questions now. I know you guys have been typing some questions. Um, can we get it on screen? Oh, oh, I'm full screen. Okay. Okay, I'm 
going to sit here. I'm going to answer your questions. My friend told me to ask you to show more animals. We'll switch to the live cams in a sec, and then you'll see, uh, you'll see all the animals. I'll answer some from, from chat already. Uh, does Patchy have teeth? Yes, Patchy has teeth. Um, Patchy's got little tiny, really like small, but real sharp uh, teeth and they're backwards facing, which really helps her to pull food into her mouth um, as she's eating it. Her top two jaws move independently. So there'll be food here and she'll like walk over the food and because the teeth are backwards facing, it'll pull it into her mouth. Kind of cool, huh? Mad Charlie said, are snake sheds sturdier than they appear on camera? I would think you need to be gentle with them. I, they're not <laughs> too sturdy. Uh, they're pretty easy to rip. I'll show you a piece that's like already ripped. So this is the underside of a noodle shed. You can see it. It's got these belly scales. These belly scales... Um, grip like the ground as, as she's moving through it. This is the top. And I'll give it like a good tug. You can see they're a little bit flexible. See how they expand a little? But um, if I really wanted to rip it, I have to pull this hard. Did that help you? <laughs> that give you any uh reference guys it was a piece of shed i wouldn't do that to a full one <laughs> don't worry actually yes yeah <laughs> you're welcome you're welcome okay um how do they move okay i've never figured out a good way to explain this i know how it works but it's really hard for me to explain um I need to make like a, I wish I had like a, a pit of sand. Um, whatever. Okay. So underneath, you saw underneath their scales, they have these long, or underneath their bellies, they have these kind of long scales. Each of those scales, you could go in and like lift up a little bit. When they move on the ground, if this is one long scale, this is a huge snake, right? This is like an anaconda. All right, this is a belly scale, this ruler. When they move on the ground, it acts like a hook, yeah. So if this is the ground, they pull it back like this, you know? And all of the belly scales are pushing the, the earth backwards, uh, so they are moving forwards. Does that, does that make sense? So they're like gripping the ground. They're not just like sliding. But have you seen videos on TikTok or whatever of snakes that people put on a bed and they're just like, it's actually a stress thing. It's not, it's not like they're excited or dancing. It's because they can't grip to fleece. So that's what snakes would look like in the wild if they weren't able to have traction and, and grip the actual earth. <coughs> so yeah, there you go. Uh, Dark Row, will you ever keep venomous or poisonous animals at Alveus? Uh, not snakes, but um, technically our scorpions are venomous. Technically, the jumping spider, I think, would be classified as venomous. Uh, I think they, they do have some venom for bugs, but... Um, so, yeah, I guess that counts. But, but not snakes. Um, what is your favorite type of snake? Um... Ugh. I'll show you. Let's see if I can show you this. I saw it at a zoo one time. I lost my mind. It's called a Bolin's python. And one, they're really cute because they have like, they're like black and white. They have really cool markings on their face. I just think they look really beautiful, but way cooler. Um, they're super iridescent. So this is a baby. Um, let me see if I can find a better picture. Here's one under human care. Um, they're super iridescent, so they're black, but they they iridesce the whole like rainbow spectrum. 
White-lipped uh, bow is also iridescent that way. But I, I like bow and pythons more. So you can see. Yeah, it does kind of look like an oil spill. They're cool. That's my favorite snake species. I just think they're neat. I think a lot of people are going to ask uh, this question or a variation of this question. Uh, Mole said, can snakes be ethical pets? Um, I think that you can have a snake as a pet so long as it's responsibly sourced. I think a lot of people do have reptiles as pets and do a good job taking care of them. I also think a lot of people have reptiles as pets and don't do a very good job taking care of them. And I think a lot of people has re have reptiles as pets that were not ethically sourced. Um, and I think that that's bad. I think it's much safer and makes much more sense to have dogs and cats, but I recognize that some people really love reptiles and, and want to take care of reptiles. Good question. Beast said, how can snakes breathe while swallowing prey? Wouldn't it squeeze their lungs shut? Um, snakes have a really special tube under, like at the bottom of their mouth. It's called a glottis. Um, and when they eat, let me see if I can show you a picture. When they eat prey, that glottis sticks out like a scuba snorkel. And they breathe through that. Why are all these pictures so bad? Okay, well, it's not really loading, but you can see the hole at the bottom, like at the bottom of his mouth there. It's a tube that they can stick out while they're while they're consuming prey and they breathe through that. This one's tough. I have a fear of snakes. Any tips on getting over it? I think a lot of people are really scared of snakes. Uh, I think one of the best ways to get rid of your fear of snakes, and I don't know how you can do this. I don't know where you are. Or like, wh But it's usually exposure for me. I, I think I used to be scared of snakes when I was a kid until I started working at the zoo, and I held a bunch of different snakes, and I was like, wait, these are chill as hell. Like, they're never going to do any. Like, they're, they don't want to bite me the ones that are scared of me are just scared of me and then they just curl into a ball when I hold them. Like I, I've never had any bad experiences with snakes. I've never been bit by a snake. Um, and I've, I've handled dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens <laughs> of snakes <laughs> in my life. Um, so for me, it was like an exposure thing. Um, I think in general, if you're not going to have much exposure to snakes, I, you're just going to have to take my word for it. They're really, they're afraid of you. Um, they're not out to get you. Um, and your chances of getting hurt by one are, are remarkably low. <laughs> okay. Diecat said, what's the difference between a snake and a legless lizard? I don't know this for sure, but I think that legless lizards have uh, eyelids that shut completely, that they can like open and close. Snakes do not. <laughs> do the rattlesnake roundups actually lower the amount of people being bitten by rattlesnakes? This is backed by absolutely no data whatsoever and comes from an extremely biased source. Uh, but I'm going to venture to say absolutely not. They may increase them because of the amount of handling that's happening at those events and in capturing them for the events. That would be my guess, but I, it's backed by no data. So. Raccoon said, should I feed snakes outside? Uh, no. W I wouldn't. Uh, they're fine. Y no. <laughs> Don't feed them. Uh. 
Uh, so they said, what do customs do with snakes if they're seized? Do they send them back or just let them loose? This depends on where they're seized. But generally speaking, they can't let them loose because uh, they came from somewhere else. So they can't just let them go. Uh, they're not going to send them back to the country and let them loose um, because of the risk of spreading disease because they've now been transported somewhere. So usually they have to place them, um, which is really hard when they seize hundreds. There are a lot of snakes that need to go somewhere. Um, so it can be really, really challenging to do that. They probably actually end up euthanizing a lot of them. Connor. Connor. Do you think when Fish and Wildlife seizes a ton of reptiles, like hundreds at a time, like there's no way they place all of them, right? You think they have to euthanize them? They probably Connor said they probably euthanize like 90% of them. Strange science at How's Noodle. Noodle's doing good. Uh, she's been mite-free for a couple weeks, so we are crossing our fingers. She remains mite-free, and she can move into her new enclosure. Um, we just have to make absolutely certain that she is, like, mite-free before we put her in a giant enclosure with a bunch of substrate because mites lay eggs in substrate. So if we put her in the enclosure and she has, like, a single mite, and then they start breeding in that substrate, we're going to have thousands and thousands of thousands of mites, and then we have to take the whole enclosure out and, like, treat the whole thing and start all over. So that's why we were taking so long to do it. Um, and then Ven Jin said, why do you not bring Noodle out on collapse anymore? That's the reason, is because of the mite stuff right now. Um, but soon. Are most snake venoms neurotoxins? This is an interesting question. I don't know um, the answer to this. I know that some venomous snakes have neurotoxins, as in like they affect your brain, and some of them have hemotoxins, like they affect your blood. Uh, but I don't know what the what the ratio is. I would guess that they're more. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, coagulate your blood. The evil sock said, what are a snake's natural predators? Um, lots of things. Uh, coyotes will eat snakes. A lot of bird species will eat snakes, birds of prey. Um, hawks, falcons, eagles will eat prey. Um, yeah, meerkats will eat snakes. Um, or mongoose will eat snakes. Um, not meerkats. No. <laughs> I don't think so. I think they're too small. Unless they had like a real, s maybe if they found a real small one. Badgers. Yeah. Okay. I'm seeing a lot of the same questions. I'm just trying to find another one. Sorry. <laughs> I like this question. Lady Ray, is there anything I can do to be nice to snakes? Do them a little favor. <laughs> uh, I think like bare minimum is to leave them be if you find them. Um, it seems like you would be a person that would already be doing that. Uh, for me, I keep my yard very unruly. Uh, my yard is like super not manicured, which is nice for me because I'm not having to manicure it. I also obviously don't have HOA. Um, but I do, I leave piles of like, if 
the branches that fall down during storms, I put them in a pile in the corner of my yard. I know there's snakes that live in there. I know that there's birds that go in there to hide when it rains. I know there's a ton of bugs that love that. Um, so I like giving them safe habitat that I don't disturb ever. Um, so you could do that. Crowley said, if, there's a, if I see a snake on the road, should I move it? If it's in the middle of the road, as long as you move it to the side that it's supposed to go, but don't go pick it up. If you want to get a stick and kind of like usher it across the road, cool. Um, better than it getting hit by a car. Just be very careful. <laughs> what do mites do to snakes? Uh, marshmallow. They're, they're kind of like fleas. Um, so they feed on blood. They like embed in scales and they, they feed on snake blood. Interesting question. I don't know that I've ever seen anyone ask this question. Salty Cajun said, do snakes eat their own shed? Not that I'm aware of. No, I don't think that that happens at all. <laughs> also an interesting question I don't think I've seen before. Uh, Auntie said, what happens when a snake bites on their own tongue? I'm also not sure that that's something that happens. I, I suppose it could. Like physically, that could happen. But I don't think it really happens. I don't think. Yeah, they say, ouch. <laughs> um, what is a snake's favorite home? Rocks, leaves, what? Uh, it depends on the snake species. Generally, snakes really like rocks, both because they have to thermoregulate and rocks get real warm when it's warm outside, uh, and it's a good place to hide. They like being like underneath something, like real tucked in there. So rocks are really good for that. Oh, this is just because I said this earlier. Strange Cyan said, what is it, HOA? Do they, they don't have HOA, like, outside of NA. Homeowners Association. It's, like, people that tell you what you can and can't do with your home. <laughs> it's just insane. Yeah, they like make you put your trash cans in a certain place and you can't like paint your house a certain color. It's, I don't know. All right, a couple more questions. This is a good question. Pocket Sand said, what are Patchy and Noodle's personalities like? Patchy is very, very, very chill. Um, Patchy is like, and likes to explore too. It seems like she's super game for handling, is always really calm about it. Um, and if you put her in a playpen, like she's really active. Like she likes checking things out and moving around. Um, Noodle is more wary of people, but she was not handled for like almost 10 years uh, before she came here. So like, obviously. Um, she's not like scared, like she won't, she won't run away or like hide or tuck her head in or anything like that. Uh, but you can just tell when you bring her out, she's, she can be more tense, um, than Patchy can, but she still does really well. She's done so much better since she's been here, um, than, than before. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. <laughs> Green Fox said, what enrichment should snakes get and how often? How often, I think both depends on the individual and the species. And it's also something that we just don't know that much about yet. Um, for what kind of enrichment? We have a playpen for Patchy that she gets to come out in. Um, when she has a really big enclosure, we'll try to change it up uh, relatively often so that she gets new sights and new textures and new things to, to explore. Um, 
so it's mostly just mostly just changing their environment. Um, I don't need it. So yeah, but not the same enrichment as like like the parrots. The parrots are getting enrichment every day. Wow, so many questions today. Um, all right, I'll do like one more. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, this is a really, I'll do this one as the last one because I've seen a couple that are sort of like this or like, do they recognize you or do they like you or whatever? Um, or yeah, do they show affection? Like, uh, uh, can they create human bonds? This is from Life's Music. One, I appreciate you asking this question because a lot of people uh, probably wouldn't even think about it being a possibility. I don't know. Um, exactly like what is going on in a snake's head. What I know for sure is if you are regularly mistreating a snake or you're picking them up in the wrong way or you pick, you know, you pick them up in a way that they don't like or you move too fast around them, um, they start to not like handling. So they absolutely have the ability to associate being uncomfortable with a person, Right? So then I would like to assume that the other side of that spectrum is possible as well, right? That if when a human handles them, they get to go outside and they, they go with a bunch of new smells and they get handled gently and um, they get fed, you know, stuff like that. I, I would like to also believe that they can associate those positive things with humans as well. I have never been able to tell if a snake can recognize me. Um, it's very hard to read a snake because uh, they are not blinking. They don't have the occipital ridge that moves like we do, like a dog does. Um, so it's hard to know. But with all animal species, bugs, cows, foxes, snakes, whatever, um, I like to assume the most in them. That's how I approach, it, approach uh, most species. Is you don't know how much how much they know or, or how much they can process, so just assume the most. Cool. Um, evil socks, just because this was your last one, do snakes see in color? Uh, they do. I, it, I'm sure it's a different color spectrum than we see in, though. I just don't know exactly what that spectrum is. Um, cool, guys. Well, that is uh, Animal Quest Remastered number three. I think yeah. Animal Quest Remastered number three. Wah, bah, 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 bah. Thank you guys for watching. I'm so glad to hear a bunch of you have not seen that Animal Quest before. I hope you learned something about snakes. Um, I hope you learn that they're not so bad. I hope you like them more, smile. Um, and next month is Georgie's Animal Quest. That's big time, big time. That's sick. Um, today is Tuesday. Uh, Kayla has today off because uh, the other girls were in LA this weekend. I'm not sure if Lindsay is doing a keeper talk on her own or not. Um, I might have to stream tonight <laughs> on my channel because of The Walking Dead. So I might... A hundred dollars, Corbid! Thank you for the hundred dollar donation. <laughs> Thank you so much. That is so sick. Corbett with the hundred. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, so I might see you guys tonight on my main channel, uh, but if I do not, then I will... Uh, is there a schedule for these? Yeah, command schedule. Um, I need to m make the schedule for March. I don't get back until uh, the first... Like, almost the end of the first week in March, though. Um, so it won't... The March schedule won't be up for a uh, hot sec. Maybe I'll try to make it today, uh, but I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, you can do command schedule in chat if you want to see. I don't know about, I don't even know if I'm going to stream tonight. I mean, I, I should stream at like 7 or something, but I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. 8. I don't know. Um, but thank you guys so much for being here. We'll switch off to the live cams. Um, if I don't see you tonight, then I will see you when I get back from Brazil. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you.